Yeah, no, I think they're the clear winner so far because the Conservative Party, the, the candidates, all the candidates, have trashed the record of 12 years of the Conservatives in power and been biting chunks out of each other. Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss continue to do it. And so Labour is sitting back. Keir Starmer can't believe his luck. He has his own problems. Uh, you could argue he should be much further ahead in the polls. Most polls only show his party uh, a handful of points ahead, or there was one uh, 12 points ahead. And he's, he's laughing. And in a way, he wants to say as little as possible at the moment and just let the Conservatives have blue-on-blue -blue attacks. He had a very rocky week last uh, last week where they got into a muddle over privatisations, what Labour would take back into public ownership, whether his from benches shadow cabinet could go on to uh, picket lines. Uh, so that was a bad moment for Labour, but the best moment is they are filling their logbooks with quotes attacking the Conservative government's record and attacking each, each other. Uh, and they're all coming from blue on blue. And we all know that divided parties where they're eating each other and they appear to be in the civil war, the, the voters just don't like that at the end of the day. Yeah, it's interesting. We talk about the Conservative Party being divided, scenes that we kind of got used to over Brexit and now Liz Trust on a populist shopping list against, you know, mm. wishonomics, which seems a lot more sanguine. But we forget, mm. don't we, that there have been these huge divisions also in the Labour Party, which were really exposed under Jeremy Corbyn. And now yeah. the sacking of Sam Tarry, Sharon Graham, the leader of Unite Union, saying that she's been aghast at Keir Starmer, has threatened to withdraw the money that has famously helped pop up the Labour Party for decades. Is there a risk that the Labour Party is seemingly shifting more to the right of their particular part of the political spectrum and could themselves be back in their own form of internecine warfare? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, all uh, political parties are, are big tents and they have a huge collection of, of people with different views. They all have a left and a centre and a right. They all have people who want to support the leadership come what may and they have and, and Labour is no different. It just it hasn't been on display as prominently and as publicly as the governing Conservatives. But, you, but you're right that uh, Keir Starmer, he got elected essentially on a programme that was Corbyn without Corbyn. It was Corbyn policies on public uh, public ownership, new top rate attacks. And he's now not, not so much tiptoeing as running away from them. And he's causing that's causing him problems with some of his trade union supporters. You mentioned Unite, Sharon Graham who is one of Labour's biggest backers. Labour still relies on, for more than half of its money, half of its finances on the the trade unions in terms of uh, donations. So that threat from Sharon Graham has got to be taken uh, seriously. And the divisions will, will become uh, apparent in, in Labour, I think, uh, as we go up to its uh, party conference in September, which Starmer would quite like and just put on a show of unity. But you can see there are fundamental differences around public ownership, uh, certainly. Mm. And let's talk about public sector pay, because one of the things Liz Truss has announced is that she wants to save taxpayers' money by essentially ending national uh, pay uh, deals for civil servants. And Labour have said this is effectively levelling down because it would, they say, lead to people up, up north, for instance, who are not in London, getting paid less. What do you make of that policy? Yeah, I'm not sure Liz Truss has thought this through, or certainly not the consequences, because you're quite right. Labour is saying, look, this is, this is levelling down, because it will mean pay cuts for nurses and teachers outside of uh, London and the South East. So that's across the uh, red wall seats in the north of England, the Midlands, also applied to Wales and Scotland. And Ben Houchin, the Tees Valley Conservative Mayor, uh, he's often paraded at uh, Conservative Party conferences as somebody who can win in the red wall. He said he's absolutely speechless. And it'll mean huge pay cuts for 5.5 million workers. I think she's just got her sums completely and utterly wrong. And she'd probably be best uh, getting away from this policy because you have, you have regional pay. That means pay cuts for people outside London and the South East. That is not levelling up. That is levelling down. And the £11 billion she said she could save in a war on waste, well, nearly £9 billion of that would come from uh, wages. And she'd want to focus on civil servants. Well, civil servants are about 500,000 of the 5.5 million people across the public services when we include local authorities and the, the NHS education. And the entire civil service pay bill, as said by the Institute of Government, only be £9 billion. So almost all the savings would come from other workers. I think 
politically, that will be utterly disastrous for us. So it's, a, it's a gift for Labour, but also it's been seized on by Rishi Sunak's supporters, including uh, Ben Hochin up there in the Tees Valley. It's real action if she ever managed to pass that policy. But, you know, what you said is really interesting. We were talking to Henry Hill, the deputy editor of Conservative Home earlier, and we're talking about Liz Truss's shopping list of promises, and, you know, with a, a very sort of populist bent, all the things she says she's going to do, all the taxes she's going to cut, uh, you know, extending the Rwanda plan, so on and so forth. And, and Henry said, you know, no one quite understands how she's going to afford all of this. The only person who backs her is Patrick Minford. And even he says, gosh, you know, this could really stoke up inflation. Yeah. Do you think she's going to be able to continue, you know, pushing out all of these pledges? Or is someone at some point going to actually start listening to what Rishi Sunak is saying and, and, and say, well, you know, that's more plausible? I, I think she's issuing a load of promises to uh, aim for the 0.2% who have votes in this contest, those 160,000 or so Conservative Party members, and the other 99.8% of us who are excluded for, uh, from this uh, will 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 just be left in the sidelines. Uh, but she's she's going to be she just won't be able to do it all. There's unquestionably. I I remember when the Conservative Party used to always say, right, we can't increase the national debt. Now she's saying we've got to increase the national debt because we're going into a downturn. You need to put more more money into people's pockets. I get that, but she's got thirty billion of uh, tax cuts pro promised. Most of those, by the way, go to corporations by halting the increase in corporation tax. Then she said she'd back Northern uh, Rail. Well, that's another $24 billion. So you go on and on and on. You add, you add them all up. I think, I think she's just going to say and do anything to win this contest, and then she'll face the consequences later on. But she's, she's going to have a problem both with her own party, Well, people say you're breaking pledges. But more importantly, when you get to a public election, you're going to have all these uh, ideas and proposals you put out, you're not fulfilling, and you've got all those attacks internally, which we discussed earlier, those blue and blue attacks. I think, I think this is the biggest period of risk of the Conservative Party. Won four, four elections, only one will in 2019, but nevertheless won four elections, been in power for 12 years. But it all does have that mm. feeling of falling apart. The cost of living crisis isn't entirely the fault of the, uh, the Conservative government. You could say it's not mainly the fault when Putin invaded Ukraine, sending world oil and food prices soaring. But the handling of it yeah. has been very poor. And yeah. it's happened on the Conservative Party's watch, which is why they will get a lot of the blame.